Hi, I'm David Loy. I'm the Director of Community Development with the City of Arcata, and I'm here to talk to you today about all the exciting stuff that's going on in our community and how the city is addressing it. As many of you know, there are lots of growth and expansion plans happening in the city and in the region. We have the uh, Farms Aquaculture Project coming to the peninsula. There's the Wind Farm Project that's going on. There's a data cable landing that's bringing high-speed internet to our region and beyond as well as HSU's uh, Polytechnic, uh, which we all have to plan for. In addition to that, we've seen over the last several years climate refugees, uh, economic refugees, people coming to the area for the quality of life. So this is all impacting our housing and our economic potential in the area. We need to plan for it. So in part, what we need to do to meet these challenges is to build housing. There's a lot of housing being built right now, some affordable housing, uh, like place project behind. We also had a huge investment over the last couple of years in our housing departments primarily. Uh, we'll need to continue to support this. The city of Arcata is very interested in working with developers, contractors, and landowners to bring their projects uh, to the community. And you know, to this end, you know, I want to invite you to you know call my office, reach out to the people that work in the community. We're there to help you navigate our processes and to uh, also assist sometimes directly financially. If you're a small startup business, for example, we have a micro enterprise program that can help get you off the ground. It's really hard starting a business and we'd recognize that. We'd like to connect you with the resources that are in our community to help you be successful. If you're a mid-sized business or a, a large business it's established and you're ready for growth, we have programs for that as well. We have a a business loan program that uh, we can loan up to $300,000 fairly easily through our office to be able to help you do the expansion that you need to do. We also recently developed a job retention program. If you're one of these businesses that's been affected by COVID and you're trying to weigh the options of laying people off to streamline your business operations, stay in business, we'd like to step in and help you retain those employees. We can loan money to you that actually converts to a grant uh, after a period of time. It's not just our economic development staff that are interested in promoting uh, good community design, uh, economic development, and businesses and residences relocating here in Arcata. It's also our planning staff. Standing here in the heart of an industrial district that's smashed between our beautiful downtown and our residential uh, districts out to the west, and we're doing some pretty amazing planning work right now to make uh, this an attractive area to invest and to uh, build and grow your business. And so I'd like you to get engaged in the Arcata Gateway planning effort that we're doing right now. Uh, look to our website, uh, City of Arcata, and find the gateway planning uh, work that we're doing and please reach out to us. Planning is an important tool for economic development as well. We're standing in this district right now that's being rezoned for high density uh, mixed use development. We'd like to see businesses relocate here. We'd like to see residences relocate here. And this long term planning vision, uh, which we're anticipating be unfolding over the next 20 years or so, uh, is being worked on right now. And so now's a chance for you to get engaged and tell us what you think. Hello, I'm Shoshana. I'm delighted to be representing the COVID Safe Outdoor Event Grant Program in Arcata. Uh, a lot of our performers and musicians and dancers and everybody have been so traumatized by this last year of the cancellations once and sometimes twice uh, as we've been trying to put things out to our community, trying to reconnect, re-emerge and reimagine what, what events can look like in this post-COVID era. Uh, I'm really honored to be a part of this project that has come together through a lot of creativity by the city of Arcata and its partners. Um, with that funding that has emerged through the CARES Act, we were able to enact this program in which there's help for permits, for applications, for equipment, including the giant, beautiful star stage our kid now has, and some help to just make things come together. So this is a great way to get small and large events to happen, and we really are so thankful to the City of Arcata, Playhouse Arts, and everyone in the community that is still trying to make things happen so we can move forward with our fabulous lives. Hi, I'm Brett Watson, Mayor of the City of Arcata. Arcata has been at the forefront of economic development from the FoodWorks Food Manufacturing Incubator in the 1990s to our Cannabis Innovation Zone. 
Economic development benefits the community of Arcata in many different ways, as taxes, fees, and federal and state program funding help create and sustain businesses, infrastructure, housing, our parks and recreation facilities, and the arts. We're excited about new opportunities like the broadband landing and new data center, and groundbreaking for the expansion of the Arcata Community Health Center. Our current planning work engages the community as we envision how we live, work, and recreate in Arcata for decades to come. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it is the value of working together, locally and regionally. Thank you for visiting Arcata's booth at the summit. No matter where you live in the Redwood Coast region, I encourage you to engage with your local government in economic development opportunities, helping to strengthen and improve the quality of life for everyone. Thank you. So Food Works is the city's food manufacturing business. Um, used to be an incubator and is no longer really in that format, although we have had some businesses move on to larger places. Um, we have 18 individual kitchen units and a rental kitchen, which is an hourly rental kitchen for food trucks and some of our uh, catering businesses, things like that. We currently have over 40 tenants that use the Foodworks facility in some way, shape, or form, and that could be for storage, that could be for um, wet or dry storage, warehouse storage, um, individual kitchen tenants, and then we also have, like I said, a lot of the food trucks that you see around town are here in uh, the Culinary Center as well. It was started back in the 90s, I believe, and kind of went through a couple different phases where the majority of the building was warehouse space and there were just a few kitchens that were available and then the need for those individual kitchens grew. So the city did a pretty large remodel in about 2012, I think, and added some additional kitchens, shrunk the warehouse space, added the large walk-in cooler and freezer at that time too, I believe, because um, that was something that was really needed was the walk-in freezer and cooler. And one of the things that we've noticed recently is a desire for other businesses around town um, to need, they, they really need additional cold storage and freezer storage. And so the idea is to potentially add some freezer storage out there at some point in the future, depending on funding and, and the need, but that's something that's come up recently. Another thing that's come up not so much recently is bottling and uh, co-packing facility. And so that's been something we've talked about too uh, with some additional property, because there is some property that can be built upon that right now is vacant on this site. So those are some things that we may be looking at in the future. But right now we're completely full. Um, we do have space in the hourly rental kitchen. And so that is one thing that we do have, but as far as warehouse space, cooler, freezer space, we're almost at capacity. The economic development money that we were able to access through um, the city of Arcata and then the program where they partnered, I guess, through the state to help us accomplish it, it was it was pivotal for us as we were contemplating where to expand. Um, we had options of what to do next in our business, and and the growth capital, or just it, it, it not only did we need the money. In, in order to help us grow and make some some steps next I guess next business growth steps it also was an incredible um, emotional feeling to, to know that the city and by extension the community was behind us so the money was critical for sure but I'd probably say in retrospect um, just the involvement and, and support of that step gave us confidence that this was a place that we were welcome and a place that would help us whether, I guess, net, whether any next generation questions. What would be our next step? So, okay, great, we've, we've got the money to make this, this next expansion. Great, let's do it. But everybody, I think good business leaders need to look at the next one and what's going to happen on the next, what happens next after that, and after that, and after that. And it just gave me the confidence that the city would stand, would, would stand behind us or be available for things we hadn't yet identified. We historically, for example, purchased um, shaped foam, and it was already pre-shaped foam. Well, with, when we ran into supply challenges associated with, with 
outside vendors doing their doing their shaping and their supplies and the inconsistencies of something that was super important for us to do that we needed to we needed to get more control of our destiny and and this allowed us by by putting a computer generated foam machine and adding more we were able to both employ more people and have more control of our de- of our destiny in a time when I think the supply chain is creaking at best. The same thing happened with um, certain metal components, floorboards and others. We were able to turn in, we, we created our own internal fab shop. And the fab shop allowed us to, to, I guess, bring more control over our supply chain. And as it turned out, it was it was a, a really lucky strategic move for some of the leaders in the company who proposed that to me because um, the the supply chain has only become more challenging. And and I, I guess also we all are, know that the challenges of Arcata Eureka, you know, it, it, it's it's not you you know you're not a major manufacturing base, so having more control without subject to transportation issues has been beneficial. I'm going I'm to circle back to one other component I'd like to shout out on your earlier question of what was what was great about the city coming in is by the city investing in us in the community I knew that I knew that I would have access to their um, help when I needed access into Congress or you know, on the federal and the state legislative level because um, I'm sure that you know a city mayor or the city manager is going to be listened to a little bit more when they call a, a Huffman or a, Jer- a Congressman Huffman or the the different the different supporters. And um, when we were getting our HUD de- hub hub zone small business designation, when we had a few questions on some Kistler amendment and different things, the the, the different congressional legislative offices liaisons have been terrific. Um, and, and I would say David Loya in the city, and the city has done a great job facilitating um, our communication in some of those areas. So, uh, when, when being in Arcata, why? why? Why we grow, we have other footprints. Um, I think the answer to that is, is, is best summed as, I'm not sure we'll always be here. And I, I know that's not, necessarily something everyone wants to hear but as a, as a realist I have to look at the realities of the different businesses and places and the, the humbled economy is absolutely booming and as it migrates and changes um, it may be become a, a less of a manufacturing area and more of an intellectual it's already fairly high I think on the intellectual area but but we're committed to it because the community has stood by us and in the number of years that we've been here, and I, I think I said this, I explained this to Ms. Ke- Ke- Kevin Cooper at the Mad River Union, mm-hmm. was was this has become such a center of excellence in our specific trade that, that it's actually drawing engineers who like the like the like the subject matter that we're in that that even that we'll always. I'm convinced we're always going to be here in one form or another. Um, where do we continue to expand? Just to, with the availability of workforce, we may not always be able to have this be our only inflatable production line, but our history and our legacy is something special, and we, we as a company are really proud of it, and there, there, is, there is expertise and talent in kind of a niche product line that is very real and alive in Humboldt and Arcata, and, and I, I can't imagine being that guy. I want to be the guy who helps to promote it and build it. And, and it's, you know, we have oceans, we have hot, we have cold, we have waves, we have the mouth, we have flat water, and the bay is such an asset. Let's figure out how to get more housing. We've got a housing problem, and we're behind supporting it. Um, and and uh, I just... I think it's a wonderful, interesting, unique place to live that is something that is very special. And um, I love how Wing is is, a bed, is part of the culture. And I, and I actually like how, because Wing really does sell all over the world, we're exporting to Europe and the Brits use all our boats. It's really fun. I think it's pretty neat to take a little, I mean, we're in space, 
we're underwater, as you know, with the, the Thai rescue stuff, and we're on submarines, and we're um, in in Europe, in Asia. So it's a little, it's fun to be to bring a, bring humble to the rest of the world, and a little bit of the rest of the world to humble. Ramping up for this new EZRZ contract. Um, primarily, this is our black load line. It's built a little bit differently than our core project. Our core project, we like to consider more like a job shop or like what you would think of an automotive industry as like a custom shop. Whereas the projects, people move around in and out on the projects based on their skills. The projects don't really move around. Our ZRZ series boats work more like a production line. The boat moves through the line through stations and the people in those stations have a specific set of skills that they learn in, in the, before they move on and learn say a different stage or go out for more skills. When we're ramping up, everybody had a hard time this last year with the labor shortage. We weren't the exception to that. And so we had to go about things differently. We started looking at our training program developed it more so that we can give people more information, get more up to speed quicker. And we learned that the CRC line helps us with that because we can put people in stations right away. They only have to learn a few skills rather than all the skills that it's going to take on, on average about 12 months to learn and they can be productive right away. With Wing and Slater Wolf for seven years. Uh, I've had multiple roles here at the company and currently in the general manager. Um, what I appreciate about Wing is the growth that we've made on, and the investment that we're making, whether it's on equipment or with our employees. Um, you spoke earlier with success about what uh, I feel like we are doing uniquely in the community to attend to some of the uh, challenges we have with our workforce. Um, and I don't think half the time they even know how much work we put into them. Uh, but we, all, we care about them, care about what we're doing here, we're so proud of it. And, and some of the investments we're making that add to jobs in our area are the things that Matt referred to about, you know, keeping control of our own destiny. The things that we do here are so extraordinary. Matt running here. I've um, been here just in my 20 years at Quincy Place. Um, but over the years, a lot of the things, uh, you know, we're always trying to develop new processes, procedures, and new manufacturing things. So about eight years ago, we kind of entered into a, a big change with the culture of junk media. Started doing all the all the software and design using 3D programs. And what that's been able to do is allow us to, to go after more complex products or different markets, um, and you have a really high level of engagement with the customers and the end users. So the engineering team here, they can go and design that tube or that structure, whatever it may be in a 3D program, send that to our vendor, our customer, have them kind of run through their you know, water trials or whatever they might want to do digitally. And then we can take that 3D software and use it to go into some other software programs to become the flat patterns that we then cut, CNC cut, weld, and then build these inflatable structures out of. Um, along with, like Kelly was mentioning, some of the other processes, we purchased a CNC hot wire machine or we can make our own foam, or we can then be, you know, be masters of our own destiny and make all really cool foam profiles in-house. We don't have to wait for it to come in from you know, the Bay Area, San Diego, whatever it may be. Um, we also recently, in the last year, um, got a color matching system. So we can, just like at a, a paint store, you can scan a color chip and create a custom wrap that would match your t-shirt or your suitcase or whatever other silly things you want to do a color match for. It. Um, and what that's really helped us do is just keep pushing forward the, the made in America. All of our products and textiles are made here in the U.S. by your brothers and sisters. Um, so that's something that we talk to these guys and gals, they really love it. 
I mean, we're building these boats here. A lot of these contracts and these things that we're getting, that money would have been sent over to Europe or Taiwan or France or all these other places. And we're able to, through these advancements and the pride of what we do, able to keep that money and all those jobs here in Humboldt County and in the U.S. And so that's a big, a big thing that you can always go home, you know, tipping your hat to is like, hey, I'm supplying that to my, my brother-in-law, my cousin, my sister. They're going to be in the forces or the Coast Guard or whale watching tours, other things like that, or whitewater. You can do all that right here at Payne. It's pretty, pretty exciting.